we examined why is it important? Why is the resurrection important? Because the resurrection means, or the significance of the resurrection is, that Jesus defeated sin. The wages of sin is death. Amen. And all men sinned. Hallelujah. So all men were to die. So the end of human life is no longer in death. Hallelujah. <laughs> we go beyond. We go beyond death and the grave. Hallelujah. Jesus rose from the dead and that is the same thing that is going to happen to all of us. Let's look at our scriptures today. He's not here, but is risen. Verse 6. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. We are continuing uh, studying the, the, the Luke chapter 24, verse by verse. We stopped at, he is not here, but he is risen. Hallelujah. So these are angels speaking to the women. Hallelujah. They have come ready to, 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 you know, to take care, to anoint the body. <laughs> they have come ready for their own business, but they, they found that they, God is already doing some other business. Jesus is risen from the dead. And they are told he is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. Now, want us to begin from where we stop. The Bible says, remember. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke about his death and resurrection. He spoke about him being arrested, being delivered unto men, being arrested, death, and resurrection. He spoke about all those things. <laughs> that he'd be delivered unto men. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 17. Saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be risen. Or on the third day rise again. Jesus spoke while he was yet alive, he said these things. And look at what the angels are saying. This is an angel. This is not a human being. This, this angel is saying, remember. <laughs> remember how he spake unto you. I give you some verses. Do you remember when Jesus uh, 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 spoke about the temple, when he cleansed the temple? He said, I'll destroy this temple. Amen. Destroy this temple and on the third day. On, in three days, I'll do what? I'll rebuild it. He was talking about his death and his resurrection. In Luke chapter 18, from verse 31 to 33, that is an example of where he spoke, where Jesus spoke about his death and resurrection. And one thing I want you to see is he said, I'll be delivered into the hands of sinful men. That happens, isn't it? Then he said, and be crucified. That happened. Those women were there and they saw it. They saw him being delivered. They saw him being crucified. As he said. Because he said these things before him being delivered. And him being crucified. Hallelujah. And then he said, on the third day. On the third day, rise again. That's the, first, that's the part that they forgot. <laughs> that's the part they forgot. Because the Bible, look at, look at what it says. Remember how he spake. Remember how he spake. Don't be surprised that Jesus is risen from the dead. Remember what he said. There's somewhere I'm going with this. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something, guys. You know... We become so modernized, us, you know, young people, yeah? and and uh, and uh, you know the 
the generation of today. We become so modernized that the scriptures no longer mean much to us. Let me tell you what God says is as good as it is done. The angel is taking them back to what he said. Remember what God said. I know where you are right now, and some of you have already started thinking about where you are right now, and the circumstances, and the situations you are going through in life. <laughs> I want to stand here representing him as his messenger, the way the angels had a message for the women. I want to tell you, remember what he said about your life. Remember what he said. Remember what God has said about you. Hallelujah. You shall not die, but you shall live. Hallelujah. <laughs> you shall be fruitful and you shall multiply. Remember what he said, that I know the plans that I have for you. Plans for good and not evil. Plans for a future to give you a good end. Hallelujah. Remember, these are angels bringing back, reminding them what God has said. I think what is important here, what did he say? Not what, what happened. No, what did he say? What did he say? Someone needs to remind themselves what God said. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Remember what he said. Don't come here for new revelation. No. I'm going to remind you what he said. What he said. Hallelujah. Are you going through trouble? Pain? Have you tried uh, all the things that you, you could try? And it has failed? That relationship with Mejaribu, it has failed? Remember how he spake unto you. These women came in the dark. Naturally, it was dark. But do you know they were spiritually or inside them, emotionally, <laughs> they were in some other kind of darkness. Praise the Lord. That their master was dead. Let's go and anoint him, bury him, and get over with it. You know the way people go visit, they call it closure, finding closure. Visiting the grave and, you know, let's, let's, let's go get over with this thing. That's what these women are coming to do. <laughs> when they were coming to, 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 to close the business, God was just beginning. And I want to tell someone today, you might be thinking <laughs> the business is closing. There's closure of business in your life with God. No, it is just beginning. And God wants you to remember today what he said. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Remember what he said. When he spake unto you. When he was speaking, he was not speaking to the congregation. No, he was speaking unto you. And to tell you, God is speaking to you today. Not any other person. Not your neighbor. I try to hear turn to your neighbor. No. Here there is no turning to your neighbor. It's you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Hallelujah. What God says is as good as it is done. Even if he says something that is impossible to man, it is not impossible with God. Hallelujah. And some of us are a living example. You will never amount to anything. The world said that. <laughs> but God said, I have a good plan for you. Praise the Lord. Woo, I feel like jumping. <laughs> His promises are yea and amen. The world is saying, marriages don't last. But God has said, <laughs> what God has put together, no man should separate. His words are alive. Hallelujah. And they are powerful. His words are alive and are powerful. There's something about God's word. That's why I don't take it light. The Bible says every word that proceeds 
from the mouth of God. That's why I'm taking my time to teach every, every word. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You know, revolutions and, and, and revivals were born out of words. You know that, eh? You know, the revival, the Pentecostal revival was born out of words. Not just any words, God's words. You are here right now, you are not uh, in some uh, uh, religious place worshipping God because of words of revival. God's words. The just shall live by faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why I don't take words lightly. No. No. Remember, God has sent angels to remind them. God has already spoken. But saying he sent angels, remember. And that is the avenue. That's the way God intends to work through us, through his word. In these last days, he has given us his word. Hallelujah. And the person of the word is Jesus Christ. Verse 7. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, saying, the son of man must. What is that? Not me. Yani, let's look at it. <laughs> the son of man must. You know, if you, you say it's a must, then it, we, you don't know about the future. <laughs> but you see, when Jesus says must, he means it. And you know, must, what does must mean? Mandatory. It has to happen. The son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. One of the miracles that happened before Jesus was crucified and died was the raising of Lazarus. Hallelujah. It was just before, I think it was about a week or something, just before Jesus died. And that was a demonstration. You know, in the, after the raising of Lazarus, what did he say? Actually, before, before he said, Listen to me, madam. I am the resurrection. <laughs> and I am the life. Jesus said those words. That he is the resurrection and he is the life. Hallelujah. And yes, they wondered. They wondered why <laughs> then did he die. They thought, he, no, 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 he should not die. But we all understand why he died. He died because of us. But death could not hold him. <laughs> Hallelujah. He rose from the dead. It was a must because he said it. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands. Now, this word Son of Man, Son of Man simply, when Jesus says Son of Man, he says, he's saying, my identity is that I am a human being. When he says Son of God, he's saying, I am divine. When he says, son of man, he's saying, I am human. So Jesus is both God and he's also human. 100% God and 100% human. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. Not that he was not powerful. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you remember when they came to arrest him, what happened to them? They fell back. <laughs> they fell back. Why? That was a man of power. He said, I can command legions of angels and right now and they'll take you all out. He chose. You know, he was delivered. He, was just, he chose to because he was going into our rescue. He was coming for us through his death. And then res resurrection. Hallelujah. Must be delivered. Notice he said, delivered, crucified. Third, third day, rise again. Hallelujah. Now look at what happened to them in verse, verse 8. He says, and they remembered his words. <laughs> Hallelujah. They remembered his words. From verse 9, the Bible says, and they returned from the grave and told the things, these things, unto the eleven and to all the rest. They remembered his words. This is not just remembering and uh, 
just that it going going like that. No. They remembered and believed. They left immediately. <laughs> the Bible says they returned from the grave. Why? Because they remembered. When they remembered his words, they got excited. Something started happening to them. They had not seen him yet, no. <laughs> All they had seen was an empty tomb. And the presence of angels. Hallelujah. <laughs> the stone rolled away. Hallelujah. But you know, those things were not enough to get them excited. What got them excited is that they remembered his words. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know how many today are remembering what God has spoken concerning their lives. Hallelujah. These were women. They remembered and they got excited. Remember his words. Go and start that business. Praise the Lord. They remembered his words. They started getting excited. Wow. By the way, he said it. This thing must be true. This thing must have happened. This stone is so big, someone must have rolled it away. And he's not inside. <laughs> he's not inside the tomb. And there are angels here. These are, these are not men. They were shining, shining men. Hallelujah. Speaking to them and telling them, he is not here. He is risen. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? They remembered his words. These angels are saying what he said. Thirdly, this is the third day. <laughs> he said on the third day. He even gave the day he's, he's going to rise again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And they got excited <laughs> to the fact that this guy must have risen. Just by the words he said. They have not even seen the manifestation of him. Hallelujah. The Bible says they returned from the grave and told these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Look at the words there. Unto the eleven and to all the rest. They went back to the eleven and to all the rest. So Jesus had more disciples. Amen. Not just the eleven. Hallelujah. There were others. The Bible says unto all the the rest. After that angelic encounter, angelic encounter and seeing the empty tomb, they ran back so energized. And that should be, this is what should be happening to us. You come here, <laughs> hallelujah, in this world that is, is, uh, is actually a tomb. <laughs> Jesus is risen and he is alive. And we are declaring that today, that Jesus has risen from the dead. So your life is sure. What he has spoken, what he had spoken before is sure. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, it's so interesting. These women had left in the morning. They are going back to men who are hiding. Mm. You remember the way Peter behaved? Uh-huh. Well, before Jesus, when Jesus was being crucified, or, or taken in, arrested, and all that. Yeah? Taken through a trial. You remember how Peter was hiding? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he continued to hide. <laughs> and he was their ringleader. <laughs> it is the women who are now carrying the first messengers, the first evangelists of the gospel of the resurrection. The women. Hallelujah. Ladies, you have a part in the spreading of the gospel. Live alone these uh, places where they are saying women should not preach or teach. Amen. One day we are going to study that. These women were carrying the message of Jesus Christ. And on their way, in the book of Matthew chapter 28 from verse 7, it says that they met him. They remembered his words. They were so excited. They were running towards where uh, the, the, the men were to tell them, to give them the message of the risen Christ. And what happens? The Bible says Jesus met them and he greeted them. <laughs> They saw him and they worshipped him. Why? Because finally, the words have come alive. His words are alive. His words at a particular point, at a time, in your, at some certain time in life, they have to come alive. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 
And you know what? When they met those guys, they must have told them that we, 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 we saw the empty tomb, we found angels there, and we were coming back to tell you about it. And we also met him. We saw him. We are not just carrying some words. No. We have seen him for ourselves. And I want to tell you, Jesus is going to reveal himself to you. If you remember his words. If you remember what he said, you are going to see him. Hallelujah. You will see him in your situation. You will see him in that issue or trouble that you are going through. Or that thing you are trusting him for. You will see him. Praise the Lord. Because he is sure. Is he alive? Is this theory? No. He is alive. Live like it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and he told these things to the eleven. Verse 10, he says, and it was. You are told who the women were or are. And you are being told. The, the, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other women that were with them. It says, which told these things unto the disciples. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are being told about particular names. Women who had an encounter with Jesus before, like Mary Magdalene. Hallelujah. We are being told about who they were. What, why, they, why is that important? Because their lives speak for our lives. Hallelujah. That you also can have an encounter with him. Right now, as, as I'm teaching, it's, it's actually not me, it is him. He wants you to know. We are being told about Mary Magdalene, the woman whom Jesus had delivered her from what? Seven? Remember seven demons? If you look, read from Luke chapter 8, verse 1. Hallelujah. There's another woman we are being told about here called Joanna, the wife of a guy, and it's called it a chooser. <laughs> chooser? used to be a manager in Herod's household. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And something interesting I found out, in Luke chapter 8, verse 1, and two, it says these women were helping in the ministry of Jesus Christ. See, when they come at disciples who are just there, they were disciples. They were also women. Eh, frontliners, the men were there, yes, walking around with Jesus Christ. But there are women behind the scenes. And these women were supporting the ministry of Jesus, resource-wise. Actually, some theologians suspect or say that this woman, Joanna, must have been, you know, using the money. <laughs> uh, yeah, chooser. Eh? The guy was on the Pharaoh's payroll <laughs> to support the ministry of Jesus. This world is very interesting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why were they doing this? Because they believed in the cause of Jesus Christ. They believed in Christ's cause. And I don't know how many of us are given to Christ's cause. They have given their lives to Christ's cause. They have decided to give of their time to Christ's cause. They have decided to give of their resources to Christ's cause. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. These women were not like the men. <laughs> These were courageous Women, disciples of Jesus, walking out there <laughs> and carrying the message of the risen one. And yet the disciples were inside there hiding. Hallelujah. Now, look at, look at verse 11. The Bible says, and their words, <laughs> just because they were women. It says, and their words. They are carrying the words of the angels, the words of Jesus. The Bible says, and their words seemed to them, to the disciples who are being told these words now, to seem to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. In other words, the women's testimony were not taken seriously. Their words seemed to be idle, you know, sounded like idle tales. The Bible says, and they did not believe them. Who did not believe? The disciples. Kwanza, men, <laughs> disciples, men who are afraid, <laughs> men who are in hiding, they did not believe in the words of the women. Praise the Lord. <laughs> they didn't take their testimony seriously. Why? Because during that time, actually, women's testimony was, you know, was not highly regarded. 
Um, I'm, I'm trying to choose my words. It was not highly, highly, <laughs> highly regarded. The status of women in society was lower than, was lower than the men, you know. Yeah, yeah, the lower status. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, in, in fact, you know, actually in Roman courts, you could not come with a, a testimony from a woman. No. No. It was not admissible <laughs> in court. <laughs> so they considered it as nonsense. What are these idol tales? What are idol tales? Nonsense. Amen. Not important. Uh, these are just women talking. <laughs> they are talking from their emotions. Or they had a, a hallucination somewhere. You know, they were together and, and they hallucinated that ah, Jesus is alive. They saw angels. <laughs> <laughs> funny, they saw angels. How now? Funny. Are you seeing how impractical, impossible what had happened was even to the disciples? Hallelujah. And there's a place I'm going with this. Praise the Lord. <laughs> These women could not just fabricate some story about the resurrection. They themselves, they themselves, they didn't anticipate it. When they came, they found what they found. And, and they had to be convinced by the angels. And Jesus showing up. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to tell you, for anyone to believe, for men to believe, Jesus has to show up. <laughs> it's not your nice talking. It's not your nice presentation. It's not your nice... Uh, uh, Elo your eloquent speech? No. It's whether Jesus, Jesus has shown up or not. Whether his wa it's his words. Amen. The Bible says the words, the, the words are living and active and sharper than a double-edged sword that can pierce into your heart. Hallelujah. His words. His words. If it is him talking, then someone's life will be transformed. Then someone will see the light. Praise the Lord. It was so hard. <laughs> so that's why I'm not so hard. I don't want to be hard on anyone here. And, 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 and don't, be, don't be hard on anyone. Mm, because they don't believe yet. Yet. Amen. Amen. Just bring the word. Amen. It's not your power to convince. It is the conviction that comes from him. By his spirit. As the word is spoken. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It takes the Holy Spirit to make someone, to bring someone, to convert them from believing not to believing in him. The disciples themselves did not believe. These guys had walked with Jesus for how long? <laughs> three years, three and a half years. Yet, three days <laughs> post his death, they could not believe. They saw him perform miracles, do all those things, but they could not believe. Let me tell you, miracles, miracles are not the answer. The revelation of Jesus is the answer. Jesus himself. These women saw him. That's why I'm teaching and preaching him. And when I teach and preach him, I know he will reveal himself to someone. Then an angel will appear to you and tell you, remember the words of your pastor. <laughs> when Jesus said, your pastor was telling you, Jesus said A, B, C, D. Hallelujah. When you are going through that turmoil or trouble in life. Let me tell you, trouble is there. Trouble has to happen. Trouble is a must. Yeah, you have to. Look at verse 12. The Bible says, then arose Peter. When did Peter arise? Peter rose and John, Peter and John rose when Mary Magdalene came to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Then they rose earlier and went. By the time the women were coming, these guys were not here. The Bible says, so this is sort of like a flashback. The Bible says, and arose Peter and ran unto the, to the grave and stooped down. Remember, he was not alone. It was Peter and John in the book of John chapter 20. The Bible says, And be he beheld the linen clothes laid 
by themselves and departed wandering. <laughs> wandering in himself at that which had come to pass. So this is, this, now Mary Magdalene has come and shared, and, hey, what are you saying? He woke up and ran <laughs> to the grave. In fact, the Bible says that John outran Peter. Uh, so that's the chronological account, how Mary Magdalene came and then Peter left and went. Then when he got there, he saw linen clothes laying by them themselves. What does that mean? Praise the Lord. This guy, he studied the situation, the grave. There's something unique about those clothes that he saw. The same way they, you know, tied him up. They tied his body up and placed it on that stone in the tomb is the way he found them, the linen clothes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They were in a place the way they were laid undisturbed, organized in a certain way. That is what he saw. The Bible says he, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves. Lying in folds. You know the folds that were out there? But collapsed because there was no body. Mm -hmm. Not there was no body. There was no body. Okay. The body was not there. So it was sort of collapsed in a cocoon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what Peter saw. <laughs> he saw the, the linen clothes orderly arranged and neat. <laughs> and that speaks of something when he saw that. It says, or it means, that the body was not removed. No one removed the body. No one stole that body because if the body was stolen, what would have happened? It would have been disturbed. Hallelujah. It was exactly the way it was put on the stone. Hallelujah. There were no grave robbers here. The disciples did not steal the body of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> you know, you're defending, eh? contending for the faith. Now I'm contending. The disciples did not steal the body of Jesus because even when they got in, they found the linen clothes neatly arranged, orderly arranged. Praise the Lord. No one stole that body. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's interesting to also know that Jesus did not unbind himself. No. He just disappeared from there and reappeared. I think he disappeared from there and then he reappeared probably even outside, outside that <laughs> cocoon. Eh? Cocoon, outside the cocoon and looked at it. <laughs> and then he disappeared and appeared outside the tomb. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The power of the resurrection. Those are already telling us something about our new bodies. Our heavenly, don't, don't just see it at the, ah, this is drama. No, that's telling us about how we shall be. Hallelujah. The Bible says when we see him, we shall be like him. Hallelujah. Hey, you hear people say, Mbinguni tutapewa muilimpia. That is exactly it. Yo muilimpia yo. It speaks of the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. He didn't rise as a spirit. No, there was no body <laughs> inside. Hallelujah. His body was uh, uh, dissolved in a way and he appeared in a new body, the resurrected body. The Bible says, if you continue to read, the Bible talks about another separate cloth, that, that na separate napkin that covered the head. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That was also nicely and neatly placed, not lying with the, with, the neat, with the linen clothes. And all that speak of the fact that no one disturbed, no, no one interfered in the process. This was a supernatural occurrence. Later on, the Bible says it is the spirit of the Lord that raised him from the dead. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, that is what uh, 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 Luke accounts for in verse 12. Let's go to verse 13. Verse 13. 
Now, in verse 13, we are opening a new scene of some two young people, possibly young, I think. <laughs> and we are told that they were disciples of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And uh, we are told that, behold, in verse 13, two of them, two of the disciples, remember they said they spoke to the 11 and the rest. The women came and spoke to the 11 and the rest. The Bible says in verse 9, and behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about seven miles. How, 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 how long is seven miles? How long is seven miles? Ten kilometers. You, you can walk. People can walk. Praise the Lord. I know that this is the afternoon. It's towards the afternoon, towards evening. Because if you walk 10, about 10, 15 miles, by the time you arrive, it will be getting dark. The Bible says later on, we shall see later on, by the time they were arriving there, it was already, it was getting dark. And then they tell Jesus what? Uh, abide with us. We shall look at that later. So this is probably during the afternoon. <laughs> the Bible says two of them. Why two of them? These guys did not believe the women. They, they, they were not, they, they still don't have the knowledge that something has happened on the third day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then they decide to take a trip out of Jeru Jerusalem. They decided to walk away because they are tired Jesus had said he'll rise again. Nothing has happened. This is the third day. It is now in the afternoon. <laughs> Let's go home. These are simple followers of Jesus Christ. Two of them. Not much is known about them. They are not important people, you know, in quotes. Eh? Important. They decide to walk away. The Bible says went the same day to a village called the Mouse, which was from Jerusalem, about seven miles. Hallelujah. The same, same day. On the third day, on that Sunday, they leave Jerusalem and they are going to a mouse. Jerusalem is where it was happening. Now they are going to where it is not happening. <laughs> they are going to a place of rest, you know. Yeah, because they were disappointed. They were so disappointed, possibly disappointed because nothing is happening. You shall see later on in their conversation. Because three days have passed and nothing has happened. And they have not, this is women. We, why not angels? Why didn't angels come to us? It's women who are coming to tell us a test, this testimony about Jesus Christ. How now? Women. Now look at verse 14. The Bible says, while they were going, they talked together all the things which had happened. They talked together. And I want to encourage us, and I want to encourage fellowship. When you're disappointed, when you're in trouble, when you feel like nothing is happening, you try that business, it's not working. You try that relationship, it is not working. You know, they talk together because that is what had filled their hearts. It's always good to be in presence, the presence of company. Hallelujah. And brotherhood, the brotherhood. Amen. The Bible says they talked together what had filled their hearts. These things which had happened. Hallelujah. What things had happened? That Jesus, that Jesus had been delivered to the chief priests and to the government and he had been tried and he was sentenced and he was crucified and that he died. This big man. Amen. This big man during that time of the feast. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in verse 15, And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus drew himself. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Praise the Lord. While they were networking and conversing about the, what had happened to Jesus, Jesus appeared. <laughs> yeah. 
in your disappointments and in your pain, in your struggle, just because you are a disciple, Jesus will appear to you. And people say, have faith, have faith, have faith, have faith, have faith. Only when you have faith, he will appear. No, these guys were not having any faith here. They were actually not even believing. But Jesus, <laughs> but Jesus appeared. They were talking about him because they really anticipated a lot. They expected a lot from him. But here he goes. He's dead. No faith. So if you're here and you don't have any faith, you don't pray like Pastor Collect prays, the way he prays, <laughs> Jesus will still appear to you. Amen. Only if your heart is after him. They were talking about him. They're not even talking about cars and houses. No, they were talking about Jesus Christ. They were talking about the things that they have and the things that they would want. No, they were talking about Jesus Christ. How they were, you know, this guy. <laughs> Nothing is happening. But the Bible says, Jesus, while they communed together and they reasoned. The same way we are communing right now and we are reasoning the scriptures about Jesus' death and his resurrection. Jesus appeared. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> he appeared and he went with them. And I want to tell you, Jesus will appear in your life and Jesus will go with you. Just keep him in the conversation. Keep him in your mind. Amen. Amen. In your job, keep Jesus in the mind. In your marriage, keep him in the mind. Keep talking about him. Hallelujah. You will see him. You will see him. I can, I can, I can say that with all certainty. He will appear. The reason one. Now we are beginning, we began talking about the reason Jesus Christ. The reason one. And you know what? He is risen and he is here with us even right now. The same way he appeared to those disciples, the two of them, uh -huh, ordinaries, the same way he will appear to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Keep him in your conversation. Keep speaking about him. Two or three gathered in his name. He is there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus will draw near. Praise the Lord. Even if it's like a stranger, right now, you are not able to see him. The Bible says their eyes were held back. They could not identify. They could not tell he is there. Me, I'm telling you today that he's there. Because the Bible tells us that he is there. He said, remember his words. <laughs> Where two or three are gathered in his name. Remember his words. Yes, you are going to trouble. Yes, you are going to financial uh, uh, turmoil, mm? instability, tightness. Hallelujah. Mm? He appeared. Do you know, he was not even spectacular the way he appeared. The way he appeared, he appeared like another man walking with them. The Bible says he just joined them. Ah, he joined in, he showed up, joined in the conversation ordinarily. And in the same way, you will entertain him in your life and you didn't know it. Praise the Lord. And I can sense him even right now. He is here with us. Hallelujah. Ready to change, transform, renew, revive, eh? energize, set a, someone's heart ablaze. Hallelujah. Who is feeling deject, dejected? Who is feeling like, you know, this life, I don't know what is happening. Things are not working out. He is here. Jesus drew near. Jesus has drawn near in this place.